This is a video for all the people out there who have something in the back of their cupboard in their great big pile of projects that they haven't quite got around to just yet. It's also for the people who are overly ambitious and think that they can get a big project done in a single day. This is kind of like a meta version of that because this is something that I tried to make on New Year's Eve to wear that night. I did not get it done, <laughs> spoiler alert. And also this is a video that I'm recording in the hopes of editing the whole thing tonight and getting it out by tomorrow. I'm gonna to show you a bit of the process of how I transformed this pair of jeans that belonged to my husband into this denim skirt. I didn't really have a plan for this video, for this make, and that kind of stopped me from getting started in the first place. I don't even wanna think about how long I thought about doing this project before I actually started doing this project. I think that that's just cause it was a super daunting thing to do. Anyway, I decided to dive right into it. I'd done some sketches Actually, I did sketches ages ago. I must have sketched this probably the end of 2022 in, in a class at uni. And now it's 2024, so yeah, that's how long this kind of idea was in my head for. I decided to start by taking the jeans apart. As I said, this pair of jeans belonged to my husband and he was gonna chuck them in the bin because they had this giant hole in the crotch. And yes, it might have been possible to patch it, but I don't think so because the hole was actually crossing one of the inner leg seams and kind of going all the way up near the fly. So I just think that even trying to patch it would have been uncomfortable and tedious and really hard. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take this pair of jeans and transform it into denim maxi skirt. I'm not really a trendy kind of person. I don't really follow trends. I don't really understand why people follow trends. I really, I really don't get it because to me, I have a style and if I follow a trend, then I kind of lose my style a little bit. Also, I don't understand how people can afford to just keep updating their wardrobe all the time. Like, where are you getting this money from? Crazy, right? I feel like another reason that I hesitated on starting this project is because I saw some trend report thing that was like, denim maxi skirts are gonna be trendy. And so then I was like, oh, do I really wanna be like a trendy gal? Not really my kind of shtick. But once I'd drawn this little sketch, I figured I could make it kind of my own thing and get creative with the shapes and the way that I was laying everything out. Anyway, so I started by taking everything apart. I took apart the side seams. I basically just decided to get myself the four leg pieces. So the two front pieces and the two back pieces and just see how I was gonna go. I also unpicked some of the belt loops so that I could maybe use them later, reattach them in a better way. I spent so much time unpicking this damn thing. It was really time consuming and there was a lot of denim here. I've also not made anything with denim before, so that was another reason why I wasn't sure about turning this into any, some sort of tutorial or anything because I don't really have that kind of stuff. Hey, my husband's home. He has impeccable timing. He always seems to come in just as I'm recording. Anyway, let's try and remember where I was up to. I have no idea. I think that I had just picked apart everything and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to, all of the pieces to go. I had this vision in my head that relied on the button fly being a certain way. And I kind of miscalculated and forgot that men's and women's jeans function differently. A men's fly, the left is over the right, whereas a women's fly, the right is over the left. So I had to flip my drawing around and figure out how that was all gonna work. And that also meant that I had to think about how I could preserve the Levi's 501s tag on the back right. Cause my little sketch that I had done had left the left side intact. There were a few decisions that I made along the way that made it tricky. One of them was to, as I said, reuse the Levi's tag. Well, actually just like leave it in the same spot as it originally comes in. And I also wanted to make sure that I could preserve the pockets. I thought that maybe I would take off the pockets originally, but then I ended up just leaving them on. The next thing I do is kind of just play around with figuring out how to get all the pieces together. This was actually really difficult to do because I don't have a dress form. And so I just have a Steph form as I like to call it. And it was really tricky because I basically had to try and pin things while I was bending over and then stand up and check the drape of all of the bits of fabric, which was just really kind of difficult to do. And eventually I came up with one sort of way of putting everything together. And then I really wanted to try and get all of this done on New Year's Eve, which was extremely, extremely ambitious of me, kind of foolish in a way. I did not get it done. And I was seriously sewing up until about 7.30, 7.45. 
and we meet both me and my husband when we kind of didn't really feel like going out anywhere on New Year's Eve, but we went out and we had a good time anyway. Because I was rushing to get it done, I made some poor decisions about what to do in the back and how to get all the fabric to drape together properly. <sighs> and it was, yeah, it was just a bit of a palaver. So that's how things were with New Year's Eve. Then I tried to also finish it, but <laughs> then I ran out of top stitching thread. <laughs> And my machine just kind of wasn't really coping with all of this really thick denim. Thick. It is thick. So I unpicked a whole bunch of stuff and redesigned how all of the back pieces were going to go together. And again, this was just an exercise in draping on myself and then going and shuffling to the mirror and then coming back out and trying to fit it all together. Eventually I came up with this design for the back where there's these kind of three sort of panels that all come down into these points. I don't know. I wanted to have a slit in the back and the front, but then the front was kind of short and had like a little mini slit on the side. So then I decided that the back should probably be a bit more, a bit more put together, not as choppy and changey. I wanted it to kind of look like a cool long skirt from the back and then a bit of a party in the front. What I learned from this is that <laughs> I have a very ambitious time frame for a lot of things and that's okay. <laughs> then I also have to be real with myself about how much I can actually achieve. I'm just very ambitious with what I think I can get done in one sewing session and it's it's never as much as, as what I hope. <laughs> so ultimately in the end, this is kind of how it all turned out. You can see in the front that I managed to keep the front left piece, the front left leg kind of mostly intact and there's a pocket there. I've removed most of the waistband, but I just left the back right leg attached because that's where the label is and stuff that I didn't want to touch. So I ended up using the extension of the waistband as a way to fasten the front of the skirt and bring the shape into a nice V in the front. And I feel like that got me a little bit of a better drape rather than just being a really straight up and down skirt. It's kind of got nice A-line vibe to it. And because I have a little waist I like to accentuate it. If I wear something high-waisted, then it balances out the proportion of my body because I have a very long torso and kind of short little legs. But then I realized that by keeping the front left piece where I did, as it moves around the side and into the back, there's the sort of groove in the fabric of where the knee used to be. And that makes this really nice shape just on that left side, which I was really, really, really liked. And so I wanted to carry that from the front all the way around to the back. And I just like, really like that line. I just feel like it's really, it's really nice. And then in the back, I also added some extra sort of design lines and features that kind of evokes the shape of a pair of jeans and those accents that you get when you have all of that top stitching and those sort of double rows of top stitching, which was just really fun. I would say that the least successful part of the skirt is the front right section, but I turned it 90 degrees so that the pocket was kind of coming in at the side and the old fly buttons are sort of coming up towards the hip, which I just thought would be a fun little detail and kind of make people double take on like, wait a minute, there's a pocket there and there's a coin pocket and there's the buttons, but wait, that's, that's the top of the skirt, not the front of the fly. So yeah, but then that piece ended up being super duper duper short. So I had to attach another bit to it. I really love the shape and I really love how on the back left, I turned the back left pocket 90 degrees as well. So you can kind of come in from the side if you want to for a bit of a, bit of a grope. It's just another way of making you double take at the skirt and seeing that it's not kind of as you might think. It's not sort of your typical jeans to skirt transformation. To finish everything off, I tacked down the back belt loops. I'm not gonna be wearing a belt with this, but I kind of wanted to preserve a little bit of that. And that also ties where the existing waistband was back into these new rotated pieces from the original pair of jeans. There are also functional parts to this skirt because I've managed to keep two large pockets, one on the front and one on the back. So it's not, it's not just completely sacrificing five pocket jean. Finishing off the garment took a while. I had to redo a flat felt seam that just wasn't working properly. Also running out of top stitching thread right at the, uh, right at the last minute wasn't great. <laughs> I also needed a jeans button to fasten down the 
the little bit of waistband that overlaps. That was also challenging to get on. I bought these jeans buttons, but I don't have an installation kit. So I was a bit confused because when I first put the button in, the little post point was sticking right through the middle, which is a bit of a dangerous feature. And then I kind of Googled it a bit and discovered that you're probably meant to like whack that down anyway to fasten it because it wasn't staying on properly. And I guess that the metal on that is kind of soft metal, like a rivet. So you can just hammer, hammer that in, but I don't have the right bit of kit. So I had to dig around in all of our bits of tools to find the right thing that could fit there so that I could hammer it properly. Just, yeah, there are so many steps that I just forget whenever I'm doing any sort of project. And yeah, thankfully I persevered. I got through, I made it. And I think that I really like the skirt. My husband really likes it too, which is good because it was his pair of jeans. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is actually distress a bit of the jeans just with some sandpaper because there are some really fresh looking bits of denim that are sitting in spots that you'd expect to have a bit of wear and tear on them. So I'm just gonna accelerate that process with a bit of sandpaper. After working through this denim skirt, I'm really excited to get back to making something from a pattern rather than having something come out of my brain because I've been doing lots of projects lately where I'm self-drafting things and ah, uh, I'm so tired and I don't think my brain can handle it right now. So I think next week I'm gonna be making a dress. I might be hacking a couple of patterns together. It's either that or fixing a lamp. Let's see what happens and you guys can find out what happens next week, I suppose. So I'll see you then, bye.